Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Bienvenidos, hermanos y amigos. Ahora. Did I miss my calling? Good morning and welcome to this hearing of the Committee on Governmental Operations. I am the chair of the committee, Council Member Fernando Cabrera. Today we'll be holding a second hearing and a vote on proposed introduction 1325A, sponsored by Council Member Levin, in relation to authorizing the creation of legal defense trusts. As we discussed previously at a our first hearing on this bill when a New York City public official is accused of a civil offense related to his or her official duties, he or she is entitled on the state law to public money to pay for his or her legal defense. When a public official is accused of a criminal offense related to his or her duties, local law allows for the law department in its discretion to provide public resources for his or her legal defense. However, when a public official or his or her staff is accused of or investigated for a criminal or civil offense that is unrelated to their official duties, such as in relation to a political campaign, issue advocacy or certain governmental or administrative issue, there is no law that allows for the use of public funds to pay for the legal defense or the legal defense of anyone else involved in the matter. In 2017, the Conflict of Interest Board, also known as COIP, issued an advisory opinion which said that public official could not raise funds above $50 per donor for the legal defense. That opinion, however, did acknowledge the occasional need for public official to raise money for the legal defense, just as any private citizen might need, and indicated that additional local legislation will be necessary for a proper legal defense fund to be established in New York City. This bill, which was recently heard and has since been amended it's meant to meet that need that was identified by the Conflict of Interest Board. It will establish a legal framework for public officials and non-public officials involved in a matter to establish legal defense trust to fundraise for the legal defense. A proposed introduction 1325A would allow public officials to create standalone trusts to pay for certain criminal and civil matters as long as those expenses aren't already being paid by the city. It will set a donation limit of $5,000 per donor and will place restriction on who could donate to a legal defense trust. Lobbyists, people doing business with the city, corporations and LLCs will not be allowed to donate and all donations will have to be reported to COI on a quarterly basis and posted online. The bill will include enforcement mechanism and have substantial fines for violations of the law. Since introdu introduction, the bill has been amended to clarify that it should not be interpreted as prohibiting or limiting certain expenditures already permissible under the Campaign Finance Act. It also been amended to require disclosure information to be posted online in a machine-readable format. Finally, it has been amended to require COI to conduct seven annual reviews by annual audits and a final audit upon dissolving of a trust. I would like to thank the sponsor of this legislation, Council Member Levine, Levin, uh, for uh, his advocacy and hard work on this issue. I also want to thank our committee staff, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, em Emily Forjong, Sack Harris, as well as my own legislator, Director Claire McLevain, for their hard work as well. I will now ask the clerk to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on governmental operations, introduction 1325A, Chair Cabrera. Aye. Kalos. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Powers. 
Uh, can I have permission to explain my vote, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I have deliberated on this bill for, for uh, since its in inception, but which was only two weeks ago. And um, I, you know, have really, sh you know, kind of discussed both the premise of the bill and then the actual logistics of it and how it would be implemented. And um, I am, I'm voting aye, but I wanted to um, just, just raise a couple of uh, ideas that have been brought up throughout this process that I think that the council should take a step back after this and reevaluate um, some parts of the bill. Um, for starters, I think that even yesterday we received, because of the short time frame here, we've received some commentary from Citizen Union. I know I've seen from the Campaign Finance Board asking questions about how this would be implemented, particularly relative to the campaign finance regulations that we have in place already. Um, I share some of their concerns that we're creating a new campaign finance structure, that we are um, you know, not synchronizing that with the existing structure, not creating the same regulations in terms of campaign finance limits, and that we could open the door to other bad behavior by virtue of the uh, creating a new fund. Um, I, don't, I do believe that there is an unmet need here, that we are um, uh, addressing something that I think uh, many members have identified as something that could, could be, should be available for a public elected official or a public servant. Um, I think that even yesterday we, be, you know, we would become aware there's no disclosure for, for bundling so that under this bill you can bundle and nobody would have any, you know, any way to identify that. Um, for that reason, I have some hesitations about the exact language of the bill that we're voting on today. I would ask that the council and the staff um, come back at some point and take another look at it and try to address some of the outstanding issues that have been raised. And I think that um, we could have a bill that would give me and I think others who will have raised concerns more comfort about where we land on the issue. But with that being said, I think I, I've talked to many colleagues about it and, and hearing their thoughts on it, I believe there is a feeling like there is an unmet need here today. And for that reason, even with some of the hesitations I have, I, I am um, supportive of the concept, but will be looking and asking for folks to consider uh, further additions to the bill that will help clarify and give more comfort uh, around some of the issues that have been raised in the last few days. And, and just the last thing I'd say is I think a bill like this should really have a little more time for deliberation in the future. That's not a criticism, it's just a comment that I think something like this we could make uh, improvements on if we just had a little bit more time to be able to do that. With that being said, I, I thank the committee for bringing it up because I know it's important to um, uh, many folks to have this conversation. And with that, um, I register my vote. Thanks. Jaeger. Mr. Chairman, may I be excused to explain my vote? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I agree with uh, what my colleague, Councilman Powers, has said. I, I do believe that uh, there are better things we could have done uh, with this bill. And frankly, in a perfect world, this bill wouldn't be necessary. Um, I believe it was necessitated by uh, erroneous advice from the campaign, from the Conflict of Interest Board, uh, which went back on uh, previous advice that it had indicated uh, that there was a uh, mechanism by which people who needed to avail themselves of these uh, trusts were able to do so and then change its mind essentially um, uh, with a new advisory opinion which necessitated this legislation. Um, we don't live in a perfect world unfortunately and I don't want to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Uh, for that reason I will support this bill. Um, I, I've uh, shared with the sponsor and, and with uh, my colleagues here um, ways that we could do better things. Uh, but frankly, this bill is necessary. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's something that was always permissible until it just became impermissible. And what we're doing now is, although we're creating a new mechanism, we're not actually reinventing something uh, and, and instituting something that had never been allowed prior here too. It was allowed until one day a bunch of folks said it's not. And uh, I don't think that's reasonable. I also uh, take solace in uh, the idea that Common Cause from the outset and long before this bill was proposed had indicated its support. Uh, Common Cause is a gold standard in many respects uh, for good government uh, uh, watchdogness over the work that we do here. Um, and with respect to Citizens Union's concern, I will say this and I'll say it on the record and I'll say it in public. I would be more impressed with Citizens Union's words uh, regarding this topic had they been desirous of presenting them to us uh, at the time that this matter was heard. 
uh, but they woke up, you know, like a couple of seconds ago uh, with their important uh, advice to us. They did not show up at the hearing. Um, the campaign finance board sent over its testimony. They weren't here at the hearing uh, to help us navigate some of the questions that we had. Uh, for example, uh, my question about uh, whether or not the conflicts of interest board would need to build something from scratch uh, or could rely on the campaign finance board to allow the conflicts of interest board to use the tool that the taxpayers already paid for, the C-SMART system, and that's something that I'll be following up with after the adoption of this bill, um, and I hope to have some of my colleagues support me uh, with, a, with a, an, an idea, whether it's by bill or whether it's by working with the agencies, to ask the CFB to simply do a, a slight build out of their C-SMART tool to make it more efficient for the Conflicts of Interest Board to manage this and also to provide the compliance that CFB knows its C-SMART tool actually provides so well. Uh, with that, and Mr. Chairman, thank you for indulging me uh, for this, uh, the vast audience here that's uh, listening to our very wise words. Uh, with that, I, I vote aye, and to you folks up there, thank you very much for being here. I vote aye, uh, and I am glad that my colleagues are here to support this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I voted five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Item has been adopted by the committee. I, I want to say that uh, your comments uh, to both of my colleagues are duly noted. We will follow up uh, and uh, fully agree. And we'll keep uh, the roll open for another 10 minutes, 10 minutes.